Hey everyone, Andy Sykes here and today we're going to be looking at my Alfa Romeo 156 GTA sports wagon. This is going to be a kind of a review of this car after owning it for over a year now. Now the 156 GTA and the 147 GTA marked the return of that GTA moniker, the Gran Turismo Allegretta, meaning lightened Gran Tora. Now, that's not just the name. They haven't just stamped on there. There are actually changes to this car in terms of the weight that improves the handling, but not just that. They've made changes to the engine, the suspension, the brakes, even the body panels on this, this 156 GTA are different to a standard 156. In fact, only the bonnet, boot and doors are shared between those two cars. The wings are completely different. The body kit's completely different. And that makes this a very, very special car. It also means very expensive repair bills if you were to lose or had to repair anything. For example, these covers for the jacking points are 50 pounds each if you can find them. Don't worry, I haven't lost that. I've just kept it at home so I don't lose. It's quite loose. Now the 156 GTA, obviously the real heart of this car is V6 Busso engine. And, and in this car, it's the 60 degree 20 valve Alpha V6 at 3.2 liters. This engine from factory gives 250 horsepower, 221 pounds of torque, and is good for a nought to 62 time of 6.3 seconds, and a top speed of 155 miles an hour, which is really impressive. It's not quite as fast as modern day cars, but it still means that this car is a lot of fun, especially when you consider that from factory, this comes with a open diff. Most people have upgraded their cars now to a limited slip differential, which really reduces torque steer and improves the car in the corners. But can you imagine this? all that torque steer through the front wheels, that would be insane. The body kit and those wheels are completely unique to the GTA and anyone who knows what to look out for can denote that this is a very standard car straight away. I mean, look at those classic Teledial wheels. They're really, really cool and they hide massive Brembo brakes that this car really needs to keep that V6 under control. The styling of the 156 GTA is timeless. This Walter de Silva design looks fantastic even today. And what's interesting is the GTA versions of the cars remained and kept that original Walter de Silva styling even till the end of the life in 2005, when the GTA had to go out of production simply because the 159 was coming into production and that V6 engine no longer met emissions rules. Regular 156 has got a Guggero update, which I feel isn't as attractive. That face lift look with the larger lights doesn't look as good as this original version. Now the visual changes to this car aren't just for looks, there are actual some practical uses too. The massive air dam on the front really helps improve airflow and it helps to cool down that massive engine. This engine also has an oil cooler too, so all of these massive dams in the front scoop in enough air to keep the oil temperature down too. And on the rear we've got this diffuser which actually helps draw air through the car pulls it from the front to the rear and gets it out the back. So yeah, it looks more aggressive, but those are practical reasons behind the looks as well. And obviously those wider wings are to accommodate that massive 3.2 liter V6 engine. So this is the Alfa Romeo 156 GTA sports wagon. And it's the GTA thanks to oh, a few things. This has upgraded bodywork, it has improved styling, upgraded suspension, stronger brakes, but the real heart of this car is its 3.2 liter V6 Busso engine. It's Alfa's classic 60 degree 24 valve Busso engine which gives this car 250 horsepower as standard and 221 pounds of torque. And that's good for a nought to 62 time of 6.3 seconds and a top speed of 155 miles an hour. To keep that power under control, Alpha upgraded the brakes on this car. You've got Brembo brakes all around and you've even got improved suspension, although the suspension from factory is a little bit soft. Believe it or not, Alfa Romeo sold the 156 GTA with an open differential. But most owners from now have usually upgraded the diffs to a LSD, a Q2 or cough diff. So you can get better handling and 
reduced torque steer. It's really fun to stab the accelerator on this car. The ABS light comes squirming on and you know you're pushing it to its limits. Now what's really impressive with this car is Alfa Romeo managed to squeeze that huge engine under that small bonnet. They did have to move a few things around though, including the suspension and even widen the track of the car. And what that means is that actually the steering circle of this car isn't the greatest. Parking can be a bit of a pain, getting around tight corners can be tricky, but you know what, that's just one of those things that you live with with an Alfa. They've got those little quirks. Like for example, the dashboard now is speaking to me in German, although it's in its English setting. Those little things make an Alfa an Alfa. You buy them for these little quirks, these little things that you need to fix and change. As with most owners changing to an LSD, a lot of owners have upgraded the suspension too. Stock suspension's a little bit soft, but this car has been upgraded to stiffer blistering coilover shocks, which means the steering and the grip is fantastic. The GTA actually has a faster steering on it compared to the regular 156. It's 20% more responsive and it has a lock to lock of just 1.7 turns. So steering is great. That lazy V6 is good down to 2000 RPM, even in sixth gear. I'm going around this corner now in third. It's quite a tight corner, but I can hit the power and I can accelerate out pretty well. It's not just a fun car to drive. It's actually a really nice place to be as well. There's acres and acres of leather in this car. It's got all the mod cons too. It's got heated bucket seats. It's got automatic rain sensing wipers. It has dual, dual zone climate control as well. So although it's a fast car, it's a fun car. It's also quite a practical and sensible car. You know, it's just as good blasting the B roads as it is going on the school run. And because this is the wagon, it's actually quite practical. You could probably go camping in it if you wanted. And if you could ever find a roof rack that fits, why not whack a roof tent on it? It's a real practical sports car. It's so much fun. I love this car. I really do love it. So you've watched my review of the 156 GTA and now you fancy one for yourself. What do you do next? Well, the first thing to do is get looking. Chances are there aren't going to be many of these for sale. Only 1,600 of the sports wagon and 1,900 of the saloon were produced worldwide. And in the UK, there's only about 100 of these left on the road. So they are very, very rare and the prices are going up. Now you can shop around and find some bargains still. I picked this up for 3,000 pounds, but a project will typically cost you between five and 6,000, whereas a good car will cost you between 12 and 15,000. My advice to you guys would be to buy the best car that you can afford. Check that it's got really, really good service history. Make sure it's had regular oil checks and oil changes. Make sure it's had its cam belt done on time. Make sure there's no rust and it needs no welding. Also look out for any damaged exterior or interior parts that are specific to this car because the chances are you will not be able to find them. And if you do, they'll be really expensive. For example, you'll see I'm missing the grills on my air dam and that's simply because they cost 350 euros each and a new wing if you can find one 600 pounds so things soon spiral out of control with these but I'm not trying to put you off if you want one do get one the chances are prices are going to continue to increase as people realize just how special and rare these are and they're great drivers too and as I've already mentioned the sport wagon version is really, really practical. You can go out with your family, you can do the normal shopping, go camping, everything with it, and you can have a blast driving it too. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you felt I've missed anything out, please let me know in the comment section below. Remember to give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks everyone, bye-bye.